What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel where we talk about Christianity and biblical sexuality. My name is Taylor Simon Maxwell, and I'm the author of The Desire Tree, which is available now on Amazon in paperback and Kindle. If you don't have the Kindle, a Kindle um, smart device, you can download the Kindle app for free on any smart device and read it on the go. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if you like what you hear, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when I post videos. Today, we are going to be talking about insecurity. This issue is near and dear to my heart, not because I enjoy being insecure, I'm, no, but because I was very, very, very insecure at one point in my life, and through my healing journey and, and through the work that God has done in my life, he has built me up into a masculine man who, simply put, just doesn't have those insecurities anymore. If you saw the thumbnail, you probably are wondering why there are Barbies in it. And I wanted to do a little visual for you guys with these Barbies. And I know it's absurd and I know it's kind of ridiculous, but I'm a visual guy and I, and, and I think a lot of guys are visual guys. Um, hence the reason why we struggle with porn, oftentimes. Anyways, that's beside the point. I, I really just wanted to use these Barbies as a visual because there's something that happens in heterosexuality that doesn't happen in homosexuality. There's something that happens in homosexuality that doesn't happen in heterosexuality. And when I say heterosexuality, I mean heterosexuality the way God designed it, okay? The way God designed it. I'm talking the blueprint. Back in the Garden of Eden when God created man, created sexuality, created genders, created masculine, created feminine, these two components. Okay, so in heterosexuality, you have a masculine and you have a feminine, right? You have the husband and you have the wife. This man is inherently masculine looking, right? And this woman is inherently feminine looking. They are different. You cannot argue that this man and this woman are the same. They're just not. You know, not only is the vessel, when the Bible talks about your vessel, it's talking about your body. Not only is this man's body literally masculine, and this woman's body is literally feminine, but it's also the soul. You know, your soul, this man has a, a masculine soul, and he has a masculine mind. And this woman has a feminine soul and a feminine mind. And so, in heterosexuality, and I've talked about this before in some of my other videos, when these two come together, because this man literally represents Christ and the woman represents the bride, the church. And so when a man and a woman come together, and, and this is what's so, one of the most beautiful things about heterosexuality is that they offer something to the other that the other doesn't have. This woman does not have this masculine body. And this man does not have this feminine body. And so in heterosexuality, you are gifting each other what the other doesn't have. That's what a good gift is. You would not gift somebody a Monopoly board set when they already have 12 of them. But what heterosexuality is, is it's selfless. You're giving the other person something that they don't have and it complements. There are things that this man is good at that this woman is not. And there are things that this woman is good at that the man is not. And so together they come together in marriage covenant and through that covenant, they bring glory to God. Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, what does this have to do with insecurity? Now, when it comes to, I'm talking about specifically insecurity regarding the way you physically look. I'm not talking about the mind and the spirit right now. I'm talking about the way you look. So according to heterosexuality, the, God, the way God designed, when this wife, okay, and we're going to be mature here and we're not going to be like, <laughs> they're naked. Like, let's be mature men of God, women of God as well, whoever's watching. Okay, here we hear me out. When this woman sees her husband naked, she finds his body sexually attractive. Maybe she likes his arms, maybe she likes his hair, maybe she likes his jawline, whatever it may be. You know, we're, women are attracted to different kinds of men and different features on a man's body. But there are things that she is inherently attracted to in her husband, okay, that are inherently and exclusively masculine. So for example, his genitals. He specifically has masculine genitals. And she's attracted to them. But at no point does the woman, okay, hear me out on this, at no point does the woman look at her husband and say, I find your masculine body sexually attractive. I wish I had a masculine body too. No. Vice versa. A husband. A husband looks at his wife's body. This is the way God designed it. Attraction is beautiful. Marriage is beautiful. Marriage is good. Sex is not dirty, okay? Hear me out. 
when the husband looks at his wife's body, I know this is crazy with the Barbies, just, just stay with me. When the husband looks at his wife's body, okay, he might even say, I love your breasts. Again, that's not dirty. That is a, that is a good thing. Read the Song of, so like, read the Song of Solomon. Um, you know, it talks about the enjoyment of your spouse's body. So the husband looks at his wife's breasts, and at no point does he say, wife, I enjoy looking at your body, your feminine body, and I wish I had a feminine body too. Do you hear what I'm saying? In heterosexuality, you enjoy the other person's body, but at no point do you want what they have for yourself. So a woman never looks at her husband and goes, I really love your masculine genitals. Man, I wish I had masculine genitals. Or, you know, a husband would never look at his wife and be like, I love you have a vagina. I wish I had a vagina too. No? See, that's what heter heterosexuality is. Excuse me. You're offering something that the other does not have. And you don't compromise what you're giving because you're complementing one another. In homosexuality, you have two people with the exact same body. This man is not offering this man anything that he doesn't already have. And this man is not offering this man anything that he doesn't already have. And so again, it's not a good gift because it's like, why would I give you what you already have? And why would I give you what you already have? They don't complement each other. And so going back, so, so with the homosexual issue, this is what we have is, is in the first in the first example I gave you guys, where the wife looks at the husband and, and does and enjoys what he has to offer her but doesn't want it for himself, and vice versa, the husband looks at the wife and doesn't want to doesn't want what she has to offer him for her himself. In homosexuality, you have a different dichotomy because you know this man might look at this man and be like, wow, he's really muscular. I want what he has to offer me. Or this guy might look at this guy and be like, man, he has a really big you-know-what, now I'm super insecure. And so in homosexuality, you are attracted to what you already are, and in turn, it opens up this door where you become capable of wanting the very thing you're insecure about for yourself. Does that make sense? So again, I will, re I will be so repetitive here because I really want this to be clear. In homosexuality, or excuse me, in heterosexuality, a man looks at his wife's body and goes, I love her breasts, they're beautiful. But he doesn't want breasts himself. Whereas in homosexuality, this man might look at this man, be attracted to what he's offering him, and therefore internalize and become jealous or envious or insecure because they have the same body. For example, my iPhone, right? Like, if someone gifted me this iPhone, I don't want to be an iPhone. I just want to enjoy what this iPhone gives me, right? Does that make sense? It's a gift. At no point would I be like, man, I wish that my body could somehow, like, do, 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 text someone. No. I take this gift. I recognize that this thing is able and, and capable of doing things that I'm not, and I allow it into my life to, comp to, I allow it into my life to assist me. And so that's what heterosexuality is, is if you're a man and you marry a woman, you are attracted to her, not just her body. You're not just sexually attracted to her body, but you're sexually attracted to who she is on the inside and what she means for you and your masculinity. Your masculinity can come alive in a new way in complementarianism, whereas homosexuality is compromising your masculinity. Homosexuality is complementarian. This also, I think, comes down to confidence, right? Because true masculine confidence is knowing who you are in Christ. And confidence is obviously not exclusive to just masculinity. I mean, women in, in the kingdom, you know, need to be confident in who Jesus says they are too, 100%. But true confidence is, it's having such a strong foundation of who you are. And knowing who you are so profoundly that no matter what, no matter what someone says to you, no matter what you see, you, you know who you are and nothing can change that. Like, so for me, like, this is what God has done in my own life. When people are like, oh, you're gay. I'm like, okay. You know, or you're, you're lying or you're confused. I'm like, okay. Like <laughs> when, you know, like, I'm not phased by it. I don't cry. I don't curl up in a, into a ball. There might have been one point in my life where it really would have, it did really affect me because again, I was insecure. But now I'm in a place where God has built me up to be so confident that I'm, I'm not phased by people's attacks 
when they contradict who God says I am because I know who God says I am. If the sky is blue and someone's like, no, it's not, I'm like, no, it's it's blue. You know, like, I just know. When you know that you know that you know who you are and you're confident in who God says you are, you're not faced. And I've said this before, specifically about physical attraction. As God has begun to work on that in my own life, and I've seen myself really and really become comfortable in my own skin and not compare myself to other guys. Those guys that I once found myself sexually attracted to, I look at and it's like, I have this detachment now. It's, it's, it's like, I look at them and I'm like, I can recognize obviously like he's good. He looks good. You know, it's, that's not homosexual. That's not sexual. There's nothing homosexual about that. I can recognize if, if, if somebody like he takes care of himself, if he's obviously muscular, then it's obviously that he's muscular. But it's like, oh, cool, he looks good, well, so do I. And I've said that before in, in, in other videos, this idea of, and that's what confidence is. It's being able to look at what other people have too and not yearning for it because, you, you know, and wanting it yourself. You know, it's like when the Bible talks about having a firm foundation and, you know, the house that was built on a firm foundation versus the house that was built in the sand. And I really you know, think that scripture, that passage can be applied to that Christ-like confidence that we are to have as Christians, that God wants to have in you. You might be a Christian and you might not even have that. I mean, I, I was Christian for years and I didn't have confidence in myself. And that's God's desire. Because when you're confident, you can offer something. But if you're insecure all the time, you're constantly going into yourself and pulling from the, wor the world and trying to make yourself feel good about yourself. But once you actually know who you are, you can gift yourself. And that is such a beautiful thing. You know, the other major thing is like in heterosexuality, the, the way God designed it is that there, there would never be, because you have this dichotomy of opposites, you have you know, the positive, the negative, the up, the down, the wet, the dry, the masculine, the feminine, because you have this dichotomy, there's never an opportunity for you to want what that other person has for yourself. Because if you're a man and you recognize you're a man, you would never want your own breasts. Or if you're a woman and you understand biblical femininity, you would never desire to want to be a man. Or, ha or be more manly. Adam did not look at Eve and go, man, I wish I looked like Eve. Eve did not look at Adam and go, man, I wish I looked like Adam. But in homosexuality, so many men who are stuck in pornography, who are having sex with other men or living a homosexual lifestyle, they see this other man with the same body as them and it's completely dementing and twisting the way God intended for them to work in their masculinity, give their masculinity, and see their masculinity. Going back to this idea of, in heterosexuality, being attracted to somebody of the opposite gender and liking what you see but not wanting it for yourself. That is pure heterosexuality, but something that a lot of homosexual men struggle with, and it's not talked a lot about, is major insecurity. Within the homosexual community, within the community of men who struggle with homosexuality and or identify with homosexuality, there are a lot of men who have major, major body dysmorphia issues. And I'm not speaking outside of the room, I'm in the room. This was me, this was my struggle. And so there's this dichotomy, okay? So if I'm a man who's never struggled with homosexuality, okay, let's just say, because again, Insecurity is not something that is exclusive just to men who struggle with homosexuality. Of course not. I mean, men all over the world in every shape and size and creed and color struggle with insecurity in some way, shape, or form. But the difference between that first man I showed you and the second two men I showed you is this. And I know I'm getting a little repetitive here, but I'm really trying to drill this in because it's, it's very complicated. It is very kind of, it's like, wait, what? Hear me out. Hear me out, okay? A man who's never struggled with homosexuality will look at another man, okay, and could potentially be like, oh, that guy has a really nice body. It's not sexual. It's not sexual attraction. It's not lust. There's no homosexual desire. But that, that just naturally happens, right? Men can acknowledge that another man looks good. And in turn, he might be insecure about his own self because of that. Right? So, like, a guy could be scrolling through Instagram, meaning a guy who's never struggled with homosexuality, 100% all about women, 
but he's scrolling through Instagram and he sees a shirtless guy with big muscles and he could be, he could recognize that he looks good, but then internalize it and be like, oh, I feel bad about myself, man. I wish I looked like that. But with the person struggling with homosexuality, it's worse. It is far worse than that first picture because, because, and this is where it gets a little complicated. So for me in my own life, I would look at a man, I'll just paint a picture, tall, dark, handsome, muscular, and I would look at him and I would be like, whoa, he's good looking. Like from head to toe, he's good looking. I would have sexual attraction for him. I would have lust for him. I would have homosexual desire for him. I might start fantasizing about being with him in sinful ways. I might just simply fantasize about being with him in a romantic way, whether it's a date or whatever, right? And so what happens when you begin to engage in homosexuality because you're literally attracted to the same thing you are, you begin to internalize those attractions in a way that the first person didn't, the first man who didn't struggle with homosexuality. And so not only would I look at a man and go, wow, he's really attractive, but then, and, and then on top of that, feel insecure because I didn't look that way, but the fact that I had lust and attraction for him and homosexual desire for him it intensified those insecurities because when you're watching pornography and you're constantly lusting after men, what it began to do in my own mind, and again, this is just me in my life, it might not be yours, but this was my life, it created this standard of what a man should look like. And so I literally got to a point in my life, this is super raw and real, and, and this is going to sound crazy, and this is so not of God, this was such a demonic thought process, but I literally thought if you did not look like, in my mind, because I had just consumed so much perversion, if you did not look like tall, dark, handsome, buff guy that I had seen in porn or on Instagram, if you did not meet that standard, you were you were you were an ugly man. You were. I would look at I would look at guys and girls walking down the street, and if he was maybe like skinny armed, or if he was kind of like had a dad bod, whatever that is. And I would just think like, what does she see in him? Like he's so unattractive. Because what had happened was, as I had built this standard in my mind and in my spirit of what a man should look like. And then what happens is you yourself look in the mirror. You know, a lot of men don't look like that. And so they have this standard, they're attracted to it, and yet they're beginning to feel insecure because like they're attracted to the very thing that they're insecure of, that they wish they were, and then it gets all muddled and it's confusing. And then you yourself look in the mirror and you're like, I don't look like the tall, dark, and handsome guy. I don't look like the guy I watched in porn last night. I don't look like that guy on Instagram. And so you begin to hate yourself and you feel gross about your body. This is not a healthy place to be. This is not a place that God wants you to be in. And so again, going full circle in this idea of heterosexuality versus homosexuality. When it comes to heterosexuality, God designed heterosexuality, okay? This is what heterosexual attraction is. You were designed to be sexually attracted to the opposite gender and then not internalize what you found attractive in them and want it for yourself, but to enjoy it and enjoy it for what it is. And so this man and this woman, they can come together in the wedding bed and enjoy each other's bodies. And this man doesn't want to be her and she doesn't want to be him, but they come in sufficiency and they offer something to one another. And if we want to get graphic for just a moment, it's not going to be crass, but you know, he is literally offering her his masculine private parts and she's offering him her feminine private parts. And in doing so, they don't have to sacrifice anything. And this is huge for the homosexual because, you know, homosexuality, you compromise your masculinity. You're giving something to somebody that they should already have, both in mind, body, and spirit, or in mind, body, and spirit. If, you, if that's you, if you are struggling with homosexuality and you find yourself comparing yourself to these men, you find yourself in a place where you are constantly belittling yourself and hating on yourself, you know, God made you. You know, scripture says that God knit you together in your mother's womb. Scripture says that God knew you before you were even conceived. He knew you and he made you. And if you, ha if you are a man and you have a, ma a male body, you have a masculine body. You have a masculine body inherently, inherently. And so my encouragement to you is that God offers healing. And, and that's what he's done in my life. It's like, I used to just hate my body so much because I kept, you know, when you consistently are putting this, these images in front of your mind, or you, or, or maybe you are actually going out and engaging in sexual, sexual activity with other men, you know, 
something that's repetitive, it gets engraved into your spirit and into your mind. And a lot of times it can be really hard to break free from that, especially if it's, you know, coming from an addiction or an addictive behavior. God's desire is to build you up into the most masculine man. That is God's desire. And I know some of you on the other end, you're like, Taylor, what are you talking about? If you knew what I was wearing right now or what I just did or what, like I'm wearing nail polish and I'm, you know, wearing a wig, whatever it is, God's desire is for you to walk in a masculinity that is profound, profound, profound. The, the places that God will take you and the things that he will do in your life and the things he will teach you when you live for him, it is profound. And I just yesterday, and I don't say this to be braggadocious or look at me, <laughs> I literally was worshiping God and just started weeping because I just thought about that little insecure boy that I used to be and and who God has made me now. And it's just mind boggling. It's like watching a movie and you see this person at the beginning of the film who's so insecure and has no idea or sense of who they are. And then by the end of the film, they've risen and they're standing tall on a mountain. And that's how I feel with my life. It's like, wow, God, I'm so glad that I'm living for you because the work you've done in my life and are doing in my life far exceeds, far exceeds any pleasure or sin that I could be a part of out in the world. But something that God has, has shown me is that he is faithful. He is good. He heals. He restores. And his desire is to see you not insecure, but confident. His desire is to see you look in the mirror and love your masculine body and not compare yourself to other men. God's desire is for you to heal. Because again, this is, you know, this is what's so awesome about heterosexuality, and this is what God has me in. This is what this is kind of the place that God has me in right now is, again, I don't know if I'm going to get married or not to a woman, but even if I don't, what God is beginning to do in me is, before I date a girl or marry a girl, what God is doing is that he's working on my masculinity, and like those that image I showed you of that heterosexual couple, that heterosexual Barbie couple, you know, heterosexuality is about offering something. It's, it's, it's getting into a relationship with a woman and having something to sacrifice and having something to offer her, which is my masculinity. And I'm in a place now where I feel prepared for that. Like if, if God tomorrow was like, here's a woman and make her your wife and be her husband and, and, and enter covenant with her, I would be ready because God has built my masculinity up in such a way that I know who I am, I know who I am in Christ, and I know that I'm offering this woman, or excuse me, I know what I'm offering this woman. And at the same time, not only am I ready to offer her my masculinity, but I'm, I'm ready to receive her femininity because I'm ready to hold it, I'm ready to receive it, and I'm ready to be complimented by who she is. And, and for me, a huge struggle in my homosexual journey was, and I've said this before, is this is this idea of, um, you know, part of my homosexual struggle was being sexually attracted to what I didn't have. I was sexually attracted to masculine men because I didn't believe I was masculine myself. But now that I am masculine, I don't need to go to homosexuality to find my masculinity. I have it on my own, and now I'm ready to give it to a woman. Or, or if it's to be single, I just will continuously live in that masculinity and offer it back to Christ and serve Christ in that way. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to get married to be masculine. You can just be masculine. And so I'm the happiest that I've ever been in my life. And I have joy and I have purpose and I have meaning because I'm whole. I'm whole. And so in conclusion, I really just hope that message was encouraging for you guys. I know, <clears throat> I know the Barbie thing might be a little weird, um, but I really just wanted to to use those Barbies to just visually paint this idea of in homosexuality, you become attracted to the very thing that makes you insecure. And I and I and I know that God can set you free from that. Again, I love you guys. I thank you for your support. And I will see you next time. God bless.